in his backyard outside Oklahoma City. Did you warn your neighbors about what you're doing? <laughs> yes, I did, yes. Sean Reeb is starting a new part-time job. What's your title with this new job? Oh, I'm, I'm their uh, launch operator here. Oh, really, Sean? He's launching a weather balloon for a startup called Windborne Systems. Good job. How's it feel? Oh, it was great. Yeah, no, that was, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Here's the balloon we just launched. Jehan Godridge trains citizen scientists like Sean all around the world. The balloons collect data on wind, temperature, and humidity, crucial to weather forecasts. Each one costs about $1,000. No offense, it kind of looks like a trash bag. <laughs> uh, how long will that stay up? One example is we have one that's been flying for 77 and a half days, but our average flight time right now is around 12 days. Most of the data driving the forecast we use comes from the U.S. government, despite recent budget cuts. But typical weather balloons used daily by the National Weather Service only last for a few hours. Windborne says its balloons circle the globe and are remotely controlled, collecting 30 times more data and covering the 85% of Earth, mostly ocean, where government balloons rarely go. You really need this level of monitoring to do accurate weather forecasting. John Dean, Windborne's 28-year-old CEO, helped start the company in 2019 with classmates from Stanford. At its Silicon Valley headquarters, they track balloon launches worldwide. I see Guam, I see Korea, I see Alaska. Including from the very first site in New York. That's mom and dad's backyard. Yeah, that's that's my, my parents' backyard. Windborne has about 100 balloons in the air, but has plans for 10,000. Better forecasting is needed as climate change fuels an increase in billion-dollar weather disasters, now striking the U.S. on average every 19 days, compared to every 82 days in the 1980s, according to Climate Central. There it goes. The federal government is now using Windborne's data, and the company is among several developing AI models that can generate new high-resolution forecasts every six hours. This could save lives and property by extending warning times for hailstorms and tornadoes from 15 minutes to as much as an hour and targeting more precise hurricane landfalls days in advance. You're not going to move the hurricane, but you could prepare people better. Amy McGovern, a meteorology professor at the University of Oklahoma, says these AI models are trained on decades of government-funded data. AI is really, really good at pattern recognition. So if you can give it tons of data, it can find patterns that humans aren't going to be able to do, and it can do it really quickly. But just like human forecasters, she says AI can struggle with extreme weather events. It doesn't know when it's wrong, and that's something that AI is not very good at yet. And when it's wrong, it thinks it's really right. Yes. It's very certain that it's right. Humans know when we're uncertain. We're like, no, I'm not real sure about this. I need to talk to some more people. The AI is like, nah, let's go. I got you a forecast, let's go. Companies like Windborne say the solution is to keep feeding it information. The more data we have, the better the forecasts are gonna get. For Climate Central, I'm Ben Tracy in Norman, Oklahoma.